<laughs> I didn't have my mic turned on. This is a great start. Welcome, YouTube, to the final stream of Astoria Saga 2. God bless America. We are going to listen to an hour and a half, probably, of epilogue dialogue. Because that's what Kaga likes. That is why we are here. That is going to be what we deserve. Yeah. My goodness, like, how many, how far back do my save files go? Like, there's the epilogue right there. My playtime was 30 and a half hours. All right. God, I really did use every single save file that I had. And that's what, like... 99? 98. Wait, 98? What? Why 98? Why not 99 save files? That's so weird. That... That don't make any sense. Like, at all. Shouldn't it be... 99? I am now mad about something that doesn't matter even remotely. Wow, I'm not going to get over this. Why is it 99 save? 98 saves. This is garbage. Why would it do this? Uh, but didn't we have some, um... Oh, welcome, Spara! We had some good adventures. But why does it cap at 98? I just... That angers me. But here we are. Promise under the stars. God, there are like... 30 different stories that might get wrapped up here. This... This might be interesting. Uh, but unfortunately, we have to wait for more people to show up. Because I can't stream to just Spara. Er, I could. But I probably should stream to more people than just Spara. Probably. I'm gonna take a sip of my water. This is a water and posture check. Make sure everyone watching this is seated properly and drinking properly. Alright. I have given three minutes for people to arrive. I will now... Go on! Promise Under the Stars. Melita Palace. The next day, 24 hours have passed since we slaughtered the giant dragon. Welcome, allies of the crown. I trust you know why we have gathered you all here. Princess Athalfis, rightful heir to the Melodine throne, has deemed it fit to announce her new policies for the future. As sworn bannerman of the kingdom, now is the time to set aside our differences and join our hearts as one under Melida's royal emblem. Now... Let's all give the princess our undivided attention. Princess, by your leave. So, like, who's here? Zaid, Foros, or, like, Garland or something? Before we begin, I would first like to thank all the brave souls who fulfilled their duties in rescuing our kingdom from unprecedented peril. Yeah, they fought a dragon. They, they went through a lot. <laughs> thank them. Give them all a bonus. And a vacation. I know damn well if I had to fight a giant fire-breathing dragon, I would ask for the weekend off. It has been 500 years since the great King Sylvanister built up our great kingdom. Only through divine providence in our own blood, sweat, and tears have we been able to relish the joy of peace and stability for so long. In recent years, however, many missteps have been made, and in more than a few instances, our brethren have chosen evil over good. 
Yeah, don't forget, in that last map, there was a group of men and women who willingly chose to side with a giant evil zombie dragon. Just to line their own pockets. Shout out to the human greed. Woo! In the end, these errors led our kingdom to suffer chaotic tragedy, unlike anything our people have ever witnessed. The blame lies with my kin, the royal family who failed miserably in their duty to protect and rule their people. Now, I would like to take this opportunity to both apologize for my family's transgressions and humbly request your assistance. Please, help us to unify the strength of our kingdom so that we may defeat the forces of darkness once and for all. Sorry, I'm a Kingdom Hearts fan. I see the word darkness and it just... it triggers things. I firmly believe that every person standing here knows beyond a shred of a doubt this can be our only path forward. In order to facilitate this, I have asked Earl Garland of Redessa to serve as our kingdom's provisional chancellor. Until I officially resume the throne and become your new queen, he will administer all political affairs as my regent. With that in mind, I would now like to ask our new chancellor to explain the details of our kingdom's new policies. Welcome back, Garland. I haven't seen you since you were whipping that ten-year-old. What the fuck happened to Lydia and her whipping boy? Well, actually, I don't care what happened to Lydia. She can stay gone. I'm trying to think, like... Well, actually, pretty much all the characters from the Steep just aren't in this game. Silton, Holin... Blonde, bowl-cut dude, Irvin or something? I don't fucking remember his name. Lydia Talon, I think the boy's name was. Jamulin, his wife... Well, I guess Eddard also wasn't in this game. Irvin? I was right, there we go. I miss Silton. When's the game about his civil war? A few of you may be familiar with me, but I've yet to meet the majority of you. Therefore, I believe a short introduction is in order. I am an Earl who serves the House of Redessa, making me a rear vassal to the Crown. Many of you come from great houses of nobility with far loftier statuses than my own. Thus, you must be perturbed by how a lower noble such as myself has suddenly been ordered to serve as the princess's right hand. Well, that's because you fought skeletons, and they didn't. However, the princess made her orders very clear to me, and I am not one to disobey her. And so I hereby pledge to dedicate my body and soul to serving the princess as her regent. I will see to it that her every will is done, and that every soul who dares to defy her swiftly is summarily put to the sword. Jesus, Garland. Um, as someone who owns but still hasn't started to play the Kaga separate sagas, how's the writing compared? I, like, he definitely has his tropes, but it's very much, how do I put it? It's pretty much just like Tear Ring Saga. And I can't describe that without telling you to go play Tear Ring Saga. It is very character focused. Like, every single character has their own story that gets fleshed out, even if it doesn't fucking matter to anything. Because of this, the pacing of Kaga Sagas are pretty bad in, like, story wise. Like, the stories are good, but the pacing's pretty horrendous. Because Kaga takes so much time to flesh out characters. That's not necessarily a good or bad thing. But it, it depends. Do you like your story to be quick and to the point, but for the characters to suffer? Or do you want your characters to get fleshed out, knowing that the story is going to get grinded to a halt? Kaga likes the latter strategy, which I prefer. Basically, Kaga sagas are for the people that say... Why are Fire Emblem characters all just their personalities locked to supports? This is the game that doesn't do that. I've always thought people that said, um, hey, why are Fire Emblem characters only in supports? I don't think they realize how much the story would have to stop to actually flesh out the 30 to 40 characters in your average Fire Emblem game. Like, 
Sure, Final Fantasy or Tales of or Dragon Quest can flesh out all their characters, but that's because they gotta flesh out like six to seven goons. Not 40 men! A king of which, until very recently, could but dream of seeing a rightful king or queen assume its vacant throne. As you know, the right of succession currently belongs to Princess Athol, the oldest blood descendant of the royal family, who happens to be serving a lot of sanctum as one of its servant maidens. The princess suggested searching her extended family for a qualified male, but this would break one of Vestori's articles of royal conduct. Her four dukes strongly vouched against it. Thus, it was decided that it would serve for two years until she turns 18. All matters of weight will require the four dukes' approval, but it will also require all your consent as well. Okay. What is the meaning of this? They expected to end some uncultured lowborn from the backwaters. All the nobles are, um... I'm excited for when you get to Barrick, the character with one readable line of dialogue is one of my favorite arcs in the game. I can't wait to see... Can't wait to see how that goes. Alright, so these nobles are bitching about Garland. Is she slapping all of the... Yes! You should be ashamed of yourselves. Have you already forgotten the catastrophe our kingdom barely escaped? How many of you can say in good conscience that you did everything you could to serve your kingdom over the past year and a half? I will not punish the idol, but I shall spare no mercy for those who dare insult the name of one of my most talented bannermen. I alone am the one who selected Earl Garland to serve as my regent. If any of you object to this, then get the fuck out of my palace. Way to fucking go. Let's go, Athol. Taking charge. Woo! Meanwhile, Foros, Dorian, Theodel. Oh, right, Theodel. Right, right, right. I forgot. I forgot Theo was a duke. Yeah, Rolik. That's right. Give that man all the power. Earl Rolik is a true hero who protected the crown from heinous treachery. Your decision is wise and just. I fear I may never repay the debt I owe you. All right, there we go. As you wish, your highness. Next, I would like to review the state of affairs within our kingdom. As you know, Aiden's fair is no more. We face no... Okay, um... Yeah, the dragon is dead. Valerius is still around. The cult is still around. As well as that bandit... Oh, God. Half a year sub to the Smexy Man. I would like one moan to celebrate, please. Uh, God. Why does one of my IRL friends that I've known since high school have to support me with his Patreon... Oh, not Patreon. Amazon Prime sub every month for a half year. I cannot believe he would do this. Anyways. I like both approaches have done good, so this entering. I like Three Houses Solution to have main themes during the story, and that the supports rely heavily on the thematics. Yeah, Three Houses is pretty good. I'm, I'll be honest with you guys. Three Houses has currently entered the stage of, oh, it was never good, or shit like that. Because Engage is out, and the cycle will begin anew. Three Houses was good. Did it succeed in everything it tried to write? No. But to act like it was really that much of a failure, I think, is dumb. Ugh. Stagging number foes still lurk in the lands. Yeah, what the fuck was up with that bandit Valerius just revived from the dead for some reason? And then nothing ever happened because of that. Then in our realm... While our soil has been scorched and ravaged, our people's hearts soar like never before. Held aloft by their adoration for Princess Athalfis. Pleased that Demodessa trying to rebuild their homeland. While the crusade cost us many lives, the royal army has already received many new applicants. Yeah! People will kill for the crown again! Once the new Meledian royal family's public feud organized, I plan to send them westward per Lionel's request. As you just heard, the Prince of Amai are on one mind. Coexisting with the Margulites is out of the question. Thus, we must join hands with the Temenos and other allied kingdoms to destroy each and every last one of them. Thankfully, Captain Farindol, the Knights of Kile. Alright. Who the fuck were you? Are you a person I'm just forgetting? I 
I don't remember you. You're you're with like you're with God, right? And the Margulis join up with the Relinites, march in our temples. These invaders from the west were momentarily halted by the same with lightning barrier. All right, so the dragon invaded the Temenos. Eddard. Okay, so all right, that's what Eddard was doing this whole time. He was slaying the dragon up north in the Temenos. Okay. And the Nefa, Nina. All right. Oh, okay. So he wasn't killed. He was just like... Or was he killed? So did we kill two of the three dragons then? Good job, Eddard. Lana, you sent me to Melida as a representative. Ask you all for your support. Seized by Valiant troops, and many of our people and ministers will starve unless something is done. I have one more delegate. Lydia! Hey, I haven't seen you since the last game. Oh, shit! My brain just stopped. I, for some reason, I thought Lydia was... Eddard's girlfriend. What the fuck was her name? Alright. So only one of the dragons is dead. Like, Eddard didn't kill the second one. He just got it to... Lianca, thank you. Yeah, this is a good book. During the Celestial Civil War, my father Nakara titled himself king and attempted to claim the throne for himself. But afterwards, he made peace and bent the knee to the new car, turning Aragoth clan into something similar to one of your duchies. Here, I hereby request that you refer to me as lady like you would any child of Melida's dukes or duchesses. Now then, would you please inform us that Solus... Today I come to bear in a missive penned by... Xilton! One year has passed and Solus began warring with the three nations of the West. Our baggage are far bravely to protect our homeland. Only see where every last quiver... Oh, no. Meanwhile, the remainder of our forces only managed to survive thanks to the meager supplies sent by the Aragoths. If the enemy discovers the supply route, the capital will fall. We've already lost our own capital. Oh, jeez, is everyone getting their ass beat? Dune. Right, Dune! I forgot about him, too! If Melda's willing to assist us... God damn, so Silton's getting his ass beat. God. And there's Talon, there he is. Pardon me, Chancellor, but as you know, I hail from the influential noble house to the north end of the mainland. Traditionally, my house has always served as a Soviet Empire's volunteers, but as my mother recently relinquished their command to me, the Carracks are now at my disposal. I thought it was the least I could do to repay my debt to you, and if I be so bold as I... See? Talon just wants to help the man that whipped the shit out of him. Yes, Chancellor, when I heard the peril, I couldn't take it. I told my mother I wished to help. But I agreed, debts must... Okay. So Talon and Lydia have been trying to help Dune and Silton, who are getting their asses beat. But then also, Eddard is up north, where God is getting her ass beat. So basically, nothing is good. The only thing that went well was us. In fact, I was in the middle of explaining a very important matter until you interrupted me. It's not your fault, Talons. Chancellor Gar- Ugh. So, alright. So. God, alright. Uh. So everything is bad. Thus, I believe Everlast War and Melida has a duty to assist. Rest assured, I will never forget the debt we owe to Solace. I wish I could rush to the car side right now, but first I urge you to listen to the Chancellor has to say. Alright, uh, yeah, more or less, Zayd got a massive W, but everyone else- Yeah, like, our victory is just ours. Like, we are the eye of the hurricane. Everything around us is just fucked. Alright, well, despite the grievous casualties in the Civil War, Cordy still boasts the greatest military power. I hereby command Cordy to simply organize his troops and deploy them to the Vesta. Alright. So, Foros and Rolik and Theodel are going up to God. Okay. I also intend to accompany the Temenos Liberation. Alright, so Athol, basically everyone other than Zaid 
is gonna go up and save God. Alright. For all maintains no standard army, but I'm sure the fight's voice are the most trustworthy mages. Okay. So Theodore's gonna go get a bunch of nerds and go save God. Alright. Despite his final message, you have not changed the world. Not yet. Alright. So I imagine Zaid is probably going to go... Yeah. Um, yeah, Zaid's gonna go help his boyfriend out west. Right. If I may, Your Highness, as Lydia stated, we were only able to reclaim our homeland through the power of Solus. Do you really mean to abandon one of our closest allies? Chancellor, I would like you to name... Okay. So, everything is terrible. Three-fourths of us are going up to save God. And Zaid is going over to save Silton. That's what's happening. Lydia Talon, may I count on you to aid the Duke in his new request? Of course. All right. Very well, Princess. With that in mind, let's now engage in a short... All right. Short respite. Got it. Wow, everything is fucked. Did, did the game... Oh, I just had to hit the A button. Earl, someone told me you were here, so we're looking all over for you. I'm overjoyed beyond measure to see that you've safely recovered. Apologies for not greeting you sooner, my lord. I had no intention to put it off, but you seemed quite busy. Meanwhile, my own knights kept me occupied with a flurry of questions. First things first, let me congratulate you on your crushing victory. Your skill and accomplishments have never been anything short of miraculous, but now you've gone and felled Aiden's Fair itself. Yeah, you know, the feeling of killing one of the ancient demon dragons is kind of lost when you know that there are two more of them who are still a problem. Please, my lord, we only did what was right. We truly are thankful to you, from the bottom of our hearts. We could go on and on about how much joy our encounter with you has brought us. But at this point, I believe we've grown so close enough to move past such formalities. Lady Bennett. But now, it looks like we'll be traveling to the Telenos together with the princess. It pains me that I will not be able to join you on your next quest, but I hope you'll forgive me. The princess has made her wishes clear. Of course, Earl. In fact, it's a relief to know she'll have you at her side. Please keep Aethor- the princess safe. That's all I ask of you. Lord Zadrian. Ah, your highness. Princess Athalfus? Please stand, the both of you. Tonight is to be a special night, where we may all drink and feast as equals. Princess, is there something you needed from me? Oh, no, Z Duke Zadrian, I merely- Oh god, they're so awkward. Just smooch again, alright? Come on. In that case, I will come with the princess for now and see you both again later. Aww. Mm. Call me a romantic, but I dare sense love in the air. Took you long enough to... <laughs> right then, time to wet my whistle. Feels like it's been forever and a day since I had a proper drink. Absolutely not, my love. You must exercise temperance until your body is fully recovered. Oh, have some mercy, Bennett! It's not every day a man gets to celebrate such a heavenly victory with all his kin and kith. But... You know what? You deserve a drink, too. And don't try to say no, or I'll have to pour it right down your gullet myself. As you wish, dear. But you must promise to keep yourself from going beyond your bounds. After all, you're a bit... Hmm? A bit... What? A bit of a lightweight. What? <laughs> oh, that's nice. And where do you think you're going, Cesar? Oh, if it isn't Garland. I was just scanning the invariants for Zaid. Any idea where he is? You know, I was already to slip away without another word, but after that talk, well, it felt like someone dumped a pail of rocks in my boots. Couldn't bear to abandon them, could you? What are you trying to say? That I'm acting out of character? On the contrary, I know precisely what kind of man you truly are. Now that I've become the new Chancellor of Melida, I won't be able to join the Duke on his expedition. That's what stopped you in your tracks, isn't it? Considering how every other noble in the whole damn kingdom is an utter imbecile, it's no wonder where the princess chose you. <laughs> yeah! Yeah, everyone's kind of a dick. Kind of a recurring theme. So Cesar is going to continue to be our right-hand man in Vestaria Saga 3. 
I'm fine with that. That That's something that I want. You hereby have my permission to serve as his lieutenant on the upcoming expedition. Depends on what he wants. If he happens to ask me, I'll give it a ponder. Can't hurt to help him a, be a, help him a bit more if he's truly that desperate. Then I suggest you go speak with him. I believe he's in the courtyard right now, stargazing with the princess. Is that so? Well, I sort of feel bad about crashing that party, but if you insist... Oh, and Garland? Yes? If we both manage to survive this next war, let's share a drink or two. I want to hear about all the times you got your heart broken before you became a greybeard. <laughs> Silly me for expecting you to ask a serious question. Off you go, brigand. I have important matters to attend to. Same here. All French. Hmm. In the end, it seems my worries were all for naught. I truly thought it might be the last I'd ever see of that rotten thief. Still, I have never met a man with a better penchant for sheer aggravation. I'll have to remind myself to set aside a choice bottle when I get home. Zane really does have two wildly different tacticians, but both very effective. I do think I prefer Cesar's, um, we engage in a bit of mischief style. Ah, oh, this is where you've been, Earl. We were looking all over for you. No one's given us any orders about the new expedition. Please don't tell me you're going to bench us again. Bonacel, you are now one of our guard marshals, a cornerstone of the Meledian Royal Army. If Duke Zadrian is to be absent for a time, that only means we'll need you more than ever. Additionally, savage camps still litter the countryside that surrounds the capital. Sending in the Royal Army as reinforcements to aid the Duke later is not out of the question, but the safety of our- Okay, so Bonacel and Prodi will not be available at the start of Vestaria Saga 3. Got it. I can't even say anything because I did bench Bonacel and Prodi in fucking Vestaria Saga 1. So I can't... After all, Duke Zayn will me at his side. Just put your worries to the re Oh! Prodi's gonna get to go with him. Right. Okay, that makes more sense. Yes, that sort of excitement is best left to the passionate youth of our generation. Like me. Prodi, I think you're misunderstanding something here. When did I ever say you would be taking part in the Duke's expedition? No, no, that's positively out of the question. Instead, you will remain here as well to assist in training our new recruits. <laughs> what? Why the long face? I only awarded you with that responsibility due to my confidence in your skills as an experienced infantry soldier. The more soldiers we're able to send out, the more fortified the Duke's defenses will be. Thus, I could never assign training duties to anyone I could not trust. But if you be- Right, gas him up. That's how you get to Prody, just gas him up. But once we get trained up, I want to join the Duke in his crusade. Please, Master Garland, please say you'll let me go. Very well. When the time comes, right. So, Prody and Bonacel are going to take more time off in the next game. Really? You mean I'll finally be able to serve as a battle captain? Thank you so much, Master Garland. I'll train all those worthless peons until they're foaming at the mouth. <sighs> Alexander and Hestian. Nope. Theodel. Called that one horribly wrong. Well, it truly appears as though there's nothing I can say to sway that stubborn mind of yours, is there? I'm sorry, Theo. I wish I could go save the Temenos with you, but... I made a promise to the Lana, and I do not intend to break it. I know, I know. Oh, but this is madness. I understand you may have awakened your Spherian powers and all, Emmy, but... You're still no match for Civil. What was the Lana thinking in trusting you with such a mission? You're misunderstanding, Theo. I'm not going to Herald to do battle with Civil. The Lana explained the truth to me. Civil is currently being held captive by a great power. She's waiting for me to come and save her. Normally, when a circlet maiden falls into the clutches of darkness, they lose all power over their circlet. Oh no, it's this scene? Oh god, what does that mean? But Sybil maintains control over the Ignusius to this day. Don't you see what this means, Theo? My sister has never lost sight of her true duty as a circlet maiden. Uh. She's still the righteous servant she was always meant to be. Casey, you picked a bad stream to raid. I am doing nothing but reading dialogue at the end of a 40-hour JRPG. This is... This is the worst possible time for me, for me to be raided. Alright, bro. Alright. 
So congratulations, you all are essentially watching the end of Final Fantasy X and wondering why a man's jumping off and fading into clouds. Her heart remains pure and good, but that alone does n is not enough to break free of the dark chains that bind her. Don't you think I have a duty to save her, as her sister, as her fellow Spherian? Tell me you understand what I'm trying to say, brother. Still doesn't change the fact that I'll be worried sick about you, si yeah, uh, Theodel, you're going up north to fight a dragon to protect God. I think you're the one that needs more, um... You should be the one who's worried about. Do you truly think you'll have what it takes to defeat a mage powerful enough to manipulate the Queen of Spire? Once we free the Temenos, I intend to rush right to Zade's side. Can't you wait until we all regroup? You know what, well, what sort of powers the Queen possesses, Theo. Lanonir even said that Lord Zadrian's sacred blade will do little to protect him against the magic she commands. Only a mage of Spherian blood has any chance of sealing her powers away for good. In other words, it's all up to me. Therefore, if Lord Zadrian intends to head west, then I have no choice but to accompany him. Lord Zadrian and Queen Sybil, both their fates rest on my shoulders now. Those were the Lana's exact words, Theo. Ah, Zade needs you. Hence, I have no right to stop you. Very well, Emmy. I leave you in Zade's hands. I now see this is how things have to be. Which means come tomorrow, we'll have to say our goodbyes. <laughs> Indeed. I only wish we I could steal a glimpse of what the fates have in store for us. We certainly won't be able to live like we used to now that everyone knows you have Spherian blood instead of Fralian. What am I supposed to do now? Once I fulfill my duties, I intend to return to Frawl. Why can't we go back to the things way... The things that, that... Why can't we go back once the crusade ends? Fucking Christ. Too many reasons to list, Emmy. First of all, you're a circlet maiden now, which means you belong to the Temenos until you turn 18. After that, it will depend on how things fare on this fire. You're a royal heir, after all. No, I'm fairly sure Frawl will be out of the question for you. But... But why? Honestly, Emmy, I've known we weren't related by blood since last year. I simply decided it was... Oh, God. I hope this isn't going where I think it's going. I figured I could just wait to spill the beans until you came of age. I know it was a selfish decision, and I didn't mean to deceive you. I just couldn't bear to lose my sister so soon. I'm sorry, Emmy. Sadly enough, my words seem to be failing here. But I... I'll be honest with you, Theo. I didn't want you to think of me as strange, so I've kept quiet about it until now, but... For as long as I can remember, you've always been special to me. You make me happy, and I love you like none other. Perhaps it was thanks in part to my Udigal ancestry. But either way, my feelings haven't changed one bit. I believe in you, brother. And no matter what happens, I hope you too can trust that these feelings of mine will never change. Okay. Mother's ring. The one you received from fa- uh, Its design may have fallen out of fashion by now, but do promise me you'll keep it safe. Seems only right that you have it, now that you've reclaimed your other mother's pendant. Now, both of them can watch over you together. Do you mind doing the honors, Theo? Oh, okay. Is the joke here it's going to be misinterpreted by someone who's watching? Oh, right, because the whole thing with Theodel is he always looks a lot worse than he actually is. Oh, God. Hearing voices, still my little sister. Don't know. Oh, jeez, they're doing this. Aga has not changed since Julia and Shigen, has he? Ugh. Don't tell me Emmy's a telepath now. I know that it's a- Hey, these guys! So, alright. The good old not-blood-related can-be-dated thing. It's my one problem with Kaga. I think a lot of the complaints with how Kaga writes things is overblown. But I do have a problem that he consistently does the... These characters were raised as siblings, but they weren't blood-related, so they're gonna bone. A lot of anime do it, a lot of JRPGs do it. I get that it's a thing, I just hate it. And Kaga does it every time. I, I knew that's where that was going. The second Spara said, oh god, this scene... And I remembered who they were. I was like, this is gonna be Shiga and Julia, uh, Julia again. Spara, tell me right now, does Bearwick do this? You don't have to tell me with who, just let me know. 
Does Bearwick do this? I'm not I'm not hitting a button until you answer me. Well, maybe I should hit a button before you answer me. Well, Irene, I think it's safe to say you fully repaid your debts to the Duke. Ready to come home with Barrick sorta does it? Alright, raise the siblings for less than a year. That's still tech whatever. Yes, mother, but save your worries, Irene. I'm used to traveling alone. And what's more, I prefer it. Much easier to get from the palace to pl from place to place this way. Now you go back home with your parents. That's where you belong. You mean I'll never get to see you again? Sure you will, sweetie. I'll be sure to let Ashram know where we live. And I'm certain he'd never pass up an opportunity to come see us. Would you, Ashram? Of course not. Really? You promised you'll come see us? You have my word. And a man never goes back on his word. Then I'll be waiting for you, Ashram. Remember, you promised. Hold your horses, Ashram. Here, I've called out directions to our house on this piece of parchment. Understood. You can't fool me. I know what you're thinking. You have no plans to show Irene your face ever again. Isn't that right? If you understand that much, then we should have... Astrom, stop being fucking... Have... Listen. A girl can have her completely nuclear family and then also just have a second dad. Alright? Come on. You truly think you're the only possible catalyst? She's already begun to remember fragments here and there. Besides, Irene was happy during her time with you, wasn't she? What kind of a father would I be if I couldn't even figure out that much? Well, I thank you for your sentiments, but I'd like to request some time to th Yeah, yeah, yeah. Think about it. Do you plan to be recruitable in the third game? Yes! Alright! He intends to come back for the third game. What's more, my adopted brother has asked for my assistance. Alright, so Halden's also going to go there. Makes sense. No, I just got to thinking, that's all. How can I head back home and run a tavern when there's so much chaos running amok in the world? Makes your blood boil, doesn't it? I've had a hard time imagining a merc of your caliber serving as an ale master for the rest of his life. Ha! You mustn't speak a word of this to Marlene, though, or she's liable to chain me up to the bar. <laughs> Either way, if and when the time comes for me to pick up my axe one more, it'd be a pleasure to fight by your side once again. Farewell. Yeah, let's hope Ashram's cancer doesn't come back. Father, what were you talking to brother about? Hmm? What'd you just say? Huh? Uh... Never heard you call Ashram that before. What did I just call him? Brother. I called him brother? Really? What's wrong? You look as if you're about to cry, darling. I don't know why, but... The tears just... I can't read that sentence without thinking of Okayasu in a fucking Italian restaurant. Brother... He protected me, all by himself. Even though I was so scared and couldn't stop crying, he held me so tightly and told me he'd never let anyone hurt me. That was a shrunk. Wait, Irene, if you remember that much, you'd understand how it feels. Alright, the trauma can wait. A shrunk will come back to you. I imagine I would have to try to get him killed in Vestaria 3 if he's anywhere near as good as he was in this one. I was still just a child when he first found me, so he worked hard to cook meals for us, find places we could get proper sleep. He had to turn down a lot of work because of me, and the other mercenaries would laugh at him. Yes, Ashram is a good boy. The absolute good- well, he's a grown-ass man. He's a good man. The goodest and kindest of men. Look at us, your father was already working as a mercenary when I was your age. Grew up in a poor mountain village, and one day a band of violent brigands attacked it. As I shook with fear after seeing my own parents murdered, one of the men leapt towards me. Oh, God. God, how does it get worse? Don't tell me they're trying to push Irene and Ashram as a thing now. Why is he so bad with relationships? God, I can't even say that. He does have a lot of good ones. God. Don't... Oh. Fates of way lead us towards where we're meant to... Go. God. Alright, Lucian and Claude. Alright, hopefully th this can't possibly be as bad as those two. God. Why? Okay. 
Claude, I believe I waited long enough. Don't think the time told me the truth. Truth about what? How the Earl and Lady Burnett felt. Maybe it can get worse. What's gotten into you, Lucian? It's not like you to become so hung up on tales of romance. As I share with you, Claude, I was once rejected by my object of my affection, which destroyed all trust I had in the fairer sex. But when I look at the Earl with his wife... Right, so you got dumped, said, I hate women, and then saw, like, a normal relationship of happy people, and went, wait, maybe I'm the problem. <laughs> what makes you think I have all the answers? Well, I joined the Knights of Maselli rather late, so I can't be sure, but you served the Earl since long ago, haven't you? Surely you must have some recollection of how it all began for them. Regardless of what I may know, I'm not sure it's something I should be spreading around, even to another trusted knight. Oh, come off it, Claude. You really think the Earl would get upset over something like this? True, it's hard to imagine. Very well. But, oh, a lengthy tale. Alright. Before you came to the island, the Earl once led us out to subjugate a particularly violent group of mountain brigands. It took us three days and three nights to fully eradicate the scum, and when we finished, we noticed we'd lost several allies along the way. The sun had already gone down, so a few suggested we wait until the morning. Instead, the Earl went out to find them on his own. The path along the cliffs proved to be highly perilous, however, and ended up falling straight into a thickly forested ravine. That particular forest also happened to be infested with so many wolves that not even the local hunters dared go near it. We did our best to journey in and find him, but the next thing we knew, ten fruitless days had passed. Then, just as we were about to give up hope, she walked out of the forest with the Earl in her arms. Oh, you mean Lady Burnett? Indeed. The Earl had injured one of his legs and was using the girl's shoulder to help maintain his balance. Despite being covered in blood herself, she was somehow able to support the Earl's weight, but her teeth were clenched in desperation. It didn't take long to realize that this girl, most likely a poor hunter, was responsible for saving the Earl's life. We rushed over to help them, and the girl collapsed the moment she set eyes on us. She must have been utterly debilitated. Alright, when we saw the look on his face, the Earl had always been stony-faced man, never showed weakness. Screaming it- Alright, so he injured his leg, and for ten days he was getting healed by Bennett. Um... And then... Surrounded by wolves. Fend them off for the entire day. Jesus, he is such a badass. He is also dating a woman that is as old as his daughter. But you know what? It's good enough for Leonardo DiCaprio. It's good enough for Earl Rolick. So Bennett was a badass who fought off 50, uh, 30 to 50 feral wolves. Um, I have beaten the game, and I am currently cursing Kaga for being really good at writing anything other than relationships. Alright, Hunter, who followed the wolf's tracks, she knows an anomaly in the movements. Fortunately, the Earl had seemingly fallen right into the middle of her hunting grounds, which she knew like the back of her hand. The Earl was too wounded to walk on his own, Bennett was half her size. The Earl requested she call for help, but Bennett feared the wolves would return. She insisted that the Earl allow her to stay at his side and nurse him. One of the Earl's legs had been completely shattered. Alright. Several days in the forest. Jeez. Only 15. Alright. Don't let this get back to the Earl. Fallen head over heels. Alright. She was 15 and the Earl was like fucking... Th medieval times, alright? Medieval times. Once the eggs her the field, home task for hand in marriage. Humble peasant who could never adequately serve as the Earl's wife. She'll say that if he attempted to force her to marriage regardless, she would probably throw herself off a cliff. Of course, we both know how the Earl is. He doesn't want to give up easily. Intent on someday changing her mind, the Earl visited time and time again. Hmm. Hey, don't jump to a conclusion just yet. As far as I know, the death of her father was what changed her mind. Oh, right, her father was a piece of shit. I forgot, that was bad part of her backstory with Fav. True, I find it incredible over 20 years apart as if they've been lost flying soulmates. How are they getting along so well? Right, they're good people, it's just one of them is 18 and one of them's in his 40s. This goddamn game. 
And I realized it was my fault, and he started taking responsibility for my own life. <laughs> well, that statement alone is proof you're more mature than you were yesterday. And the only way to ensure you don't end up as an internal failure is to try, try again. Well, I'm not sure I could call it love, but I've always felt something special whenever the Earl's late wife walked into the room. Yeesh. You had a thing for the Lord's wife? Talk about living dangerously. Don't curb your imagination, Lucian. I've already explained to you multiple times how I respected that woman. Never in my wildest dreams would I have ever... Alright. Remind me to go find some more... T Remind him to go get better friends. Hey, Abram. Okay, you the helmet really stays on on a banquet, Abram. Like... You can do other things. Like, you can take off the helmet and enjoy yourself. Besides, Commander. Yeah, there we go. Isn't it proper manners to remove your helmet during a meal? Seems a bit too ominous, wouldn't you say? Abram? What are you acting so angry for? Oh, Lady Phoebe. Please, rest assured. I Is he drunk? Um, I'm simply trying to express my passion for providing my sub subordinates with a substantial education. Well, I hope you won't overdo it. You aren't on the battlefield anymore. And I expect you to enjoy this feast just as much as I am. Oh, I know. Can you join me on the dance floor for a twirl or two? <laughs> me, my lady. B but I could never. A Bastille buffoon such as I could never hope to adequately touch toes with proper nobility. Huh. Oh well. If you don't want to dance with me, I'll just have to find someone who does. Are you crying, Commander? <laughs> don't be ridiculous, you fool! But I can see tears dripping out from inside your helmet. This... this is sweat, clearly. Mere sweat! Yes, it's awfully stuffy in this palace, wouldn't you say? Now, I've had quite enough nonsense from both of you. I hope you're ready for a new training regimen when we return to Cordia. Oh, and it will be rigorous. Prepare your hearts for a thrashing unlike anything you've ever had the pleasure of suffering thus far. Who do we think we are? His personal pinch cushions? Nah, despite how he seems, Commander Abram's a good soul buried under all the pomp and circumstance. Oh, and I'm sure that if you ever saw his real face, you'd fall right out of your seat. His real face? You mean there's actually a person buried under that armor? Could have fooled me. Just be sure to give me a few a fair warning so I can steal myself with a few more drinks. Oh, Amloot. Okay. Amloot and Lafine, probably. I take it you've made up your mind, Amloot? Yes. I'm very sorry, Earl, but I have chosen to journey to Solus along with Duke Zadrian. Despite conflicting feelings that swirl within my heart, I simply can't forget the words my aunt spoke to me. Just know this, Amloot. No matter what awaits you back home, you are the only rightful heir to the throne of Maselli in my eyes. I can only pray these words remain in your heart as well. I already owe you a great debt I could never hope to repay, Earl. So, honestly, I have no right to ask you this, but... What is it? Don't hold back, Amloot. Tell me exactly what you need. I would like Lafine to accompany me to Solus. What? I wanted to see my homeland. I wanted to feel the breeze of the steep and listen to the voices of its people. And... It shames me to say this, Earl, but the thought of facing my younger brother alone fills my heart with dread. I want her there, at my side. Never thought I would hear such words trickle out from such a brave soul. Do you fear your brother, Amloot? No, Earl. I... I fear myself. As I once told my aunt... I fear that simply laying eyes on his face will bring back enough blood-stained memories to send me into a frenzy. But if Lafine were there, you believe she would give you the strength you need to contain yourself. Honestly, Amlut, I'm ashamed of you. I thought you were a much greater man, but it appears I misjudged you. Father! Can't you understand how he feels? Lute's still suffering, even now. Yeah, you shouldn't have to be his therapist. My, my. Rarely do I have the chance to witness this level of defiance from you, daughter. But I must remind you that I haven't ex exactly forbidden you from departing. Huh? Make no mistake, I stand by what I said. Amlut is lacking in many areas. But right, right. Of course, just be the man's therapist for when he goes into a blood rage when he looks at Silton. Because granted, Silton's father, big piece of shit. But Silton is not... Well, Silton's also a piece of shit, but he went through character development. And now he's slightly less of a piece of shit. Only slightly. 
and Loot, please make sure to take impeccable care of our sweet Lafine. If something were to happen to her in Solus, neither of us would ever forgive you. Once the war ends, we expect to see you both safely return to Maselli. Is that understood? Of course. I swear to the gods in this bow that no harm shall ever befall her. Earl Rolick, Lady Bennett, I promise to make Lafine happy. As long as I still draw breath, I will fight tooth and nail to protect her from all manner of sorrows. And loot. The elders do say it's wise to send your children out into the world the first chance you get, but... <sighs> Father? Are you crying? Don't worry, Lafine. Those are tears of joy. Now, dear, don't you think we ought to let these two have some time to themselves? Father! <laughs> Just go on. <laughs> don't say another word to me. <laughs> <laughs> Ah, Rolick. Take this, dear. What's this? My handkerchief. Hurry now. You wouldn't want to see others to see you drying your tears with my lace, now would you? <laughs> oh, so what if they do? Let them laugh for all I care. <laughs> I love him so much. God, I love Rolick. Rolick might... This game is like... Same with Vistaria Saga 1. Zade is a really good main character, but the side main character to go with the main character is just as good as the main character. Rolik and then Silton in the last game are both really good. No, or <laughs> he's drunk. Ah, I love. Him. What's the matter, Phoebe? Your face looks red as a beet. Remember now, you're still a child, so no more than a few sips for you. Duke Foros? Um, I'll have you know I haven't drunk a single drop. Why is your face so red? Do you have a fever? Uh, here, let me take a look. What do you think you're doing? Despite what you may think, I'm a lady. Don't you dare touch me without permission. What are you talking about? Your mother is my elder sister, which makes me your uncle. I used to help your mother bathe you when you were just a wee little baby. What are you acting so shy for now? Bathe me? I've heard many things about you from Lady Ariel, Duke, but now I see she wasn't exaggerating the least. You're a first-class general, but you're also as tactless as a rock. You mean to say I lack wisdom? Not wisdom, more consideration, I suppose. Oh, what am I talking about? Sorry, you'll have to excuse me. No need to hold back with me, Phoebe. Besides, this... Okay, but Baruch was an asshole. Did we even kill Baruch? I can't remember. Yes, we did. Yeah, no, it was that map with the ballista. He was trying to sneak away as a regular guy, and we just killed him. Right. Or, no, that wasn't that map. God, I can't remember things. This is what I get for playing a 35-hour strategy RPG across, mul across, like, 12 streams and 6 months. Is who I am, and I couldn't care less what others think about me as a result. If I happen to offend you, however, that is something I would like to apologize for. Oh! Right, and then he gets shoved down. I forgot, he died that early. Right, he did. Right, he was the main villain of the first half of the game. No, honestly, Duke, I'm the same way. I've caused many people so much hurt by simply blurting out whatever's on my mind. But I want to stay honest, and I want those around me to feel comfortable enough to be honest as well. Do you really mean that? Yes. But I draw the line when it comes to... Of Why is your face so red if you aren't suffering from fever or the effects of a drink? The color seems to have faded a bit. But when I looked at you, you looked as red as my wine. Um, by private, by all means. Um, my father, Rolik, um, um... Embracing my mother. I believe he only did it because he drank too much, but all the other nobles were watching them. Oh, she was upset because he was making out with his wife because he was drunk. Oh, that's funny. That's funny. First of all, Phoebe, you simply must stop calling me that. We're family, which means that you're free to call me by my first name. Call me Duke one more time and you'll earn yourself a spanking. Ah. In that case, Uncle Foros. Wouldn't it embarrass to see your own father acting like a fool in public? My father was a very sober man, so honestly, the thought never occurred to me. 
But as long as your father and his wife swore to love each other under the eyes of the gods, what problem could there possibly be? There's nothing to be gained from worrying about what other people think. Thus, your embarrassment is a sheer mystery to me. Yeah, let your parents be in love, Phoebe. I want my father to serve a respectable lord. Yep. Mind joining me to dance to commemorate our new alliance? Want me to dance with you? A duke dancing with his bannerman's daughter. An uncle dancing with his beloved niece. Nothing embarrassing about that, I hope. Very well. I have to warn you, however. I'm a terrible dancer. I'll be expecting you to take the lead. <laughs> it's all in the steering! I'm not sure I like your... I, I love these games' characters so much. God, I love them. This is charming! This is good! Is something the matter, Duke Dorian? You look incredibly uncomfortable. Lady Ariel? Eh, don't worry about me. I just find it difficult to relax in places like this, that's all. Oh, and spare me the whole Duke thing. Drake is a good name for me, as it's always been. As you wish, Drake. I heard that Frisk suffered the greatest casualties during the war compared to the other three duchies. What are your plans now? That devil Lagniel made sure to suck all he could out of the people of Frist, then killed whoever dared to resist him. We've lost over half our countrymen over this last dark decade. Honestly, I have no idea where to begin. Well, you mustn't beat yourself up about it. <laughs> yeah, I know half your country's dead and you have to take the reins after a literal demon man savaged your country for a decade. But don't worry about it, it's fine. Mustn't beat myself up over it, huh? <laughs> I knew you were pampering all Ariel, but I still thought you were different from the rest of those brainless highborns. Right as we speak, my people starve, burned out of their homes, children crawl along our streets, unsure if they'll live to see another day. Yet here I am, forced to break bread with these ignorant nobles who only care about stuffing their gullets. I hate this, and I hate them. The only reason I'm still here is out of my respect for the princess, but trust me, my blood is boiling. I wish I could give these trumped-up peacocks a taste of my people's suffering. And that goes for your, you and that stupid brother of yours. You're exactly right. Please, I beg your forgiveness, Drake. No, I stepped over the line just now. Sorry. Look, I'm not interested in causing anyone any more trouble, alright? Just leave me alone. You don't need to apologize, Drake. You're completely in the right. I was the fool. I simply assumed that as long as my heart was in the right place, I'd always know the right thing to say. The right way to help. Yes, we're both equally powerless. Which only infuriates me further. All I managed to inherit was the rubble of a mercilessly brutalized city and its people's hatred towards those in power. How is an uneducated thief like me ever going to be able to serve as their new leader? But I've heard that many Fristian citizens and bannermen have already come to respect you. And skilled ministers like Abbot Karate. I know it may vex you, but you can't give up. Cordia will do its best to support you. It's the least we can do for family. Family? Oh, that's right. You still remember my mother, Ariel? Only a bit, due to how young I was at the time. But I remember her all the same. My aunt invited me to Frist many times when I was little, you know. I believe I was nine when the Duke and his wife came to the palace together to visit her. That was when we first met. You seem to be quite the tomboy, from what I could tell. Remember what happened? I've never been punched that hard by anyone younger than me until the day I met you. <laughs> yes, I believe I have a faint recollection of what transpired. Your mother was so kind, Drake. She did her best to console me as I bawled my eyes out after that fight. Kind, huh? I only remember her taking your side and yelling at me until I felt like my ears were about to bleed. It was just another one of your casualties, yet it acted like I was responsible to everything. You always were a crafty one, Ariel. No, that's selling your intelligence too short. You always knew exactly how to swim with the tide and stay afloat. <laughs> that sounds even worse. Remember, Drake, I was only seven back then. I doubt I had the means to hatch up any plans that dastardly. Still, Drake, I'm surprised by how much you remember. It's mostly a faint blur to me now, but I'll never forget what happened afterwards. Yes, not long after that, Lagnell's lies doomed my uncle to an early grave. That's right. He had both my parents executed as filthy rebels to the crown. Meanwhile, one of Lagniel's men stuffed me into a sack and carried me out of the palace so that no one would ever find me. I still remember how terrified I felt back then. Thanks to that experience, I've never been able to stand dark, cramped- Isn't the map where you became a lord inside of a cramped prison? 
That adds a layer to that. But why did that man save you? He said he couldn't bear to kill a child like me, but I think he also had a bone to pick with Lagniel. At first, he planned to deliver me to my uncle in Cordia. But Lagniel's pursuers made leaving the duchy impossible, so he had us join a band of thieves instead. He died when I was twelve. Got chopped right in half by one of the bodyguards in the rich merchant's mansion we sacked. In chapter 16, he has the damn I told you I'm claustrophobic. I forgot about that. I forgot too many things. It wasn't all that bad. Guild never stole from the poor. We tried to avoid bloodshed. Guild was also kind of me, so I've currently been... <laughs> God damn! Why the hell is everyone around this man dying? All into nobles. Yep, and one day you got to take revenge on Lagniel. Guards had nothing. All they do was poke me with the stupid spears and make me feel even worse. That's when I came up with the idea to find some evidence, so I equipped him to Lagniel's and stole one of the rings. Okay, so that's why he's had the ring the whole time. So the next several years running from assassins day in and day out. Couldn't even escape from Frist. Always on edge, sleeping with one eye open. Uh, I managed to sneak onto that ship, hijacked by pirates. Like even think the captive. Right, okay. Right. Hey, this guy again. Karate, what's the matter? I have a press manager to discuss these dice. See? Oh, Larry. I'm gonna go smoothly. Well, I'm gonna explain. Oh, Roswell! The fuck are you doing? Why are all the like long haired, beautiful men showing up? Oh, okay. He also mentioned that he thought you and Duke Dory. Excuse me? Like. So you just walk up to them, say, hey, we want you to be arranged to be married. Do it. While they're in the middle of a conversation talking about Drake's entire life of abuse. Right, cousins. Ki okay, you know what? This is ancient times. This one doesn't bother me as much. Lagniel's machinations put a quite a damper on relations with two duchies. Right, cousin fucking was all over the place in ye olden times. And still is if you go to the Middle East or Japan, apparently. Yeah, I learned that apparently America, like, our whole don't fuck cousins thing is like an American thing. Well, and European. It's a white people thing. Actually, I don't know. Middle East and Japan is not everywhere that's not white. But, like... Because I was curious, due to all the fucking cousin fucking that exists in anime and JRPGs, I was like, is there something, like... Wrong with Japan? And then I learned, oh no, Japan and the Middle East tend to not care about that. I'm still gonna say it's weird. Are you even listening to yourself? Don't you ogres have any respect? This is all Foros. Now now, Duke, there's no need for you to answer us immediately. Um, Duke Foros specifically said to prioritize your feelings. Hold on a minute, how am I supposed to say no to give me that big long spiel about peace and happiness? I don't mind. All right, Drake. Choose. Right now. Marry your cousin or be an asshole. All right. Here we go. Drake, make your choice. <laughs> All right. Any more goading at this point would simply be cruel. Match made in the heavens. Either way, the Duke and I are from taking part in an expedition to focus on me. Right, so Drake is not going to go save God or save Silton. Um, I'm going to stab at my childhood. One more chance to reclaim the peaceful, abundant frist. Yup. Alright. There they go. There you two are. I mean, you two vanished in the thin air or something. On the contrary, Salna, where have you been? You better not snuck any drinks off the table, young lady. Mother, how could you even imagine such a thing? I'm a circlet maiden. I'd never dream of causing- I saw that. Hey, thank you very much for the follow, Supersonic Cats. Spell with a Z, so you know that motherfucker is cool as shit. The fact that you can say that with a perfectly straight face is truly remarkable, sweetie. In any case, I have something to tell you. I've just traveled to tra decided to travel to Solace with Amloot. I'm worried about him. Who the heck is calling me? That is my mother. Crazy how I can't talk right now. 
Also, crazy how my phone is dying. But all these things don't matter. Be my cousin Silton. Surely you're worried about the fate of your homeland, aren't you, mother? Of course I'm worried. But shouldn't you be heading back to the Temeno, Salna? If you go off there on your own again like this, Lana is bound to give you another thorough scolding. Normally, perhaps. But Lady Vanish told me to, that as of now, I possess the greatest power compared to all the other circlet maidens. This latent potential inside me is also what allows Lana Nier to protect me from afar. For whatever reason, the other circlet maidens simply lack the ability to let Lana Nier's power flow through them. So I need to join the Western Crusade. This is the distinguished part of my responsibilities as circlet maiden. Did Lady Vanish truly utter such words to you? Well, mostly. I may have paraphrased a few things here and there, but I thought I smelled something fishy about this. And as Lady Vanish has already left, there's no way for us to ascertain the truth. I think we should trust Salnia here, my dove. I had no intention of ever returning to the Sanctum myself, but here we are, gifted with the greatest of opportunities to serve them again. Things may not have turned out as we planned, but it's still a fine chance to clear our names. And I, for a woman, loathe to doubt the fact that Salna harbors great power. Yeah, she's a dragon healer. That's radical as fuck. I just realized that Engage had Hortensia as a dragon healer, and Hortensia is fucking cringe. Alright, you know what? Maybe a dragon healer is not in and of itself based. Of course not. I'll exercise the utmost care the entire time. Salna, if you intend to meet with Silton, then I want you to deliver a message. Tell him that I'll stop by as soon as I'm able to visit him, Giskel. Hey, Giskel! I think that's the first fucking time he's been mentioned. Hortensia rides a Pegasus? Why do you think it was a Wyvern? Well, because Ivy. Right. Never mind. Healing Wyvern still good. And oh my god, Inelia! God, I she was never mentioned at all in this. Which makes sense. She's just Giskel's wife right now and is getting her ass beat with Silton and the rest of them. Are you sure this is the wise choice, Bort? Absolutely. I too would have been worried sick if it were the old Salna. But our daughter has grown a great deal over these past few months. She's finally become a full-fledged circlet maiden. A mature... She's still a child! Right, this is medieval times. You were an adult at 13 because people didn't live past 25. Being a father is more difficult than it looks. Aww. Sorry for leaving you hanging, Fernando. I know how lonely you must have been. No need to worry, though. Come tomorrow, we'll be soaring the skies again like we always do. L hey, Aslan! Captain Aslan? Yeah, what? where the fuck were her sisters during this game? I don't remember. I heard the ladies from the board. Did Lady Vanish truly say all that to you? I've never heard her speak of any such things. Huh? Oh my god, she really was just lying the whole time. Fernando? Your dragon just flew off with... Oh my god! Did Fernando and Bert hook up and go off and have a romance together this whole time? Oh my god! I didn't know I was reading peak fiction! Absolutely incredible. Uncle Harvin! Oh, it's been so long. Senna, I didn't know you returned to the capital. Where's the old bag of bones? Right over here. Still spending most of your time frolicking around with that young wife of yours, I see. Just tell me you've been able to keep the business afloat. <sighs> yes. All thanks to your help, of course. I'm going to look for Shauna, Grandfather. Psst. You know how Grandfather can be. Just try to remember that he doesn't really mean anything by it. See y'all later! Senna is always so remarkably composed for a girl her age. Honestly, sometimes I feel like she's more grown up than me. Until a few years ago, she was just another innocent maiden. In fact, if, I hadn't, if it hadn't been for that horrible accident, I'm sure she would have gone living a peaceful life as the daughter of a wealthy merchant. Oh, balderdash. Senna doesn't need your pity. I'll have you know she's mighty proud of the life she's managed to carve out for herself. Yes, I'm sure she is. I only meant... You know... It hasn't been that long since we were married, Harvin, so I put off about asking about it. But I always did want to know, what did happen to Senna's parents? Hmm? Well, Jonathan, do you mind if I tell her the tale? I've got nothing to hide. Everyone with a lick of sense knows those royal imbeciles are the ones to blame. As you wish. Another long-ass backstory. Alright, here we fucking go. 
It all started before the war with Sylvia. At the time, our kingdom had a monopoly on trade with the Empire. They imported rare goods from the mainland, slapped high tariffs on them, and we sold them for profit. A simple trade. Welcome to the Kaga, um, exposition hours. Yep. Senna's father was Nelson, a famous merchant from Regina, a man with a true heart of gold and one of my dearest friends. But in the end, he never told me the truth. Simply said he started a new venture with a traveling merchant. To protect me, perhaps. Either way, the truth was he'd been smuggling imports over this traveling merchant so they could avoid the tariffs. That way, poor people in other territories would be able to purchase medicine at a more reasonable prices. But then one man caught wind of what was happening and ran to the royal court. It was the rival merchant who envied Nelson, of course. At the time, Lag- Right, Lagniel was an asshole. Got it. Wife and child were imprisoned, died of heartbreak, because that's a condition, apparently. Same thing in Final Fantasy X. How did Titus's mom die? Heartbreak. Because Jet isekai into the future, kind of. I, uh, I, once I realized that Final Fantasy X is literally just an isekai story, I fucking... Jesus Christ. Before she passed, she entrusted Senna to me. At the time, I made a stop at the Temenos to convalesce after I fell under the weather. I did it in unconsciousness. I don't think about what had happened by the time Harvin located. If only been there, I might be able to save him. Aw. Poor Jonathan. We may have lost the shop, she said, but we can rebuild... Jesus! That is a good girl right there. Senna is a good girl, even if I never really deployed her and Jonathan. If I was lucky, I'd be able to see Senna reopen her father's shop before I breathed my last. I felt that would be the better way to honor her parents, and will hopefully serve as a motivation for her to keep moving forward. I used to think you were horrible for forcing such a young girl to work day in and day out. As did I. In fact, I wanted to adopt her myself and beg Jonathan to entrust her to me, promising I'd take good care of her. But they both declined my offer, stating that they would stop at nothing to succeed in their quest. Worried me a great deal. Senna was only ten. Senna I see now is completely different. She's grown so much. Senna went to visit the old shop. Aiden's fair burned it to the ground! Inside, I found the charred corpses of the man who confiscated it from my son, along with his wife and children. What goes around comes around. Can't say it was any plainer than that. Okay, but his wife and kid didn't do anything. Jonathan, that, that was an innocent wife and child that had nothing to do with the stealing of your shop and the death of your son. Oh. What do you know? As I'm talking about something, it comes up. I want you to know I had this playing in a background tab and I heard you say Final Fantasy X was an isekai and I'm mad. Not because it's true, but because I can't claim it isn't. Titus gets whisked off into another world. Literally the plot of Final Fantasy X. It's an isekai. Proof that maybe not all isekais are bad. The only good ones are Final Fantasy X and Overlord. Yes. Only good isekais. Final Fantasy X and Overlord. I have nothing to worry about anymore. Jonathan's gonna retire. Alright. Overlord is great. Mommy, I'll bet... <sighs> Fucking... Uh... Friss, go back to whatever the fuck you were doing. We'll care for her as if she were one of our own. Just promise us you'll do your best to live a long, healthy life. Well, yes, I suppose I can't truly rest in peace until I see her foster a family of her own. Know of any suitors with some brains for their noggins? I definitely know no intention of dying before I see her in a wedding dress. Aww. Good old man Jonathan. Besides, I'm sure you've got at least two decades left in you, old man. Only the good die young. Ha! <laughs> that was nice. Who haven't we seen yet? I'm not going to look. We haven't seen Heston and Alexander and Maya. We haven't seen Ravina and Halden. Uh, who else haven't we seen yet? Oh, Sheila and Zaid and Penelope. 
This is going to be Sheila. Orin, I forgot he existed. Oh, and Barzelfen. We haven't seen Barzelfen. As of now, it fills me with more shame than anything else. That's why I couldn't bear to tell anyone about it. If all I known Slain was your older brother. Oh, Slain in a court! They're still gone, but I don't imagine they'll be talked about here. You knew my brother, Sir Orin? I only ran into him a few times, but he always treated me like a true comrade. He truly is an expert when it came to archery, and was even kind enough to teach me a few new techniques. Oh, so he was nice to you? Very much so. He always took good care of his subordinates. On top of that, he's rather handsome, which made him popular among the female soldiers. When I first met you, I was shocked by how much you resembled him. That's one of the reasons I just couldn't get you out of my mind. It was all quite a shock to me as well. I thought about going home and searching for him many times after I've heard he'd left. But for some reason, I could never bring myself to do it. I still owe so much to this family for their kindness. When you first asked me about Slain, I was so happy I began to cry. Ah, I just wish I could see him again, one more time. I wonder where he is right now. Slain's dead sister is actually not dead. Fun fact, if you kill off a court before chapter 20, Slain stays around but has no scenes with his sister or learns that she's alive. Oof. I believe that can be arranged. I'm sure he's dying to see you too. And luckily, Cesar told me exactly where he's headed. Well, Shana, what do you say? I'd be happy to guide you to him if it pleases you. What? I serve as a Massalian ranger, but my squad's planning to detach from the main army and head out to support Solus. And according to Lieutenant Cesar, that's exactly where Slain is headed. In other words, if we journey to Solus, we're bound to find him there. The road may be perilous, but you'll have my protection. I want to go, but I'll make sure I repay everyone. Olivia and Harvin will be all for it once they hear the story. They love you like their own family. Right, this is nice. Orin and Shauna will go off together. It'll be sweet and cute, and then Slain's going to find his sister. Um... Also, okay, I get another guess. Hestian, it's gonna be Hestian. The saint, what in God's- Oh, Barzelfen! My daughter's been begging to ask me if the artist they probably thank him for his saintly deeds. And I heard he was currently busy in this area- Barzelfen? Oh, you mean that Harry Oaf with the axe? Well, I don't know him personally, but lots I heard he pooped himself out and collapsed in the guard room in the back. E gad! So, still out cold though. If he is, I want you waking him up, got it? Of course! I would do little to disrupt a lofty man's precious slumber. Yes, father. Oh, god. Okay. They're gonna see him and think he's ugly and it's gonna be sad? No. It's gonna be the opposite. They're gonna think he's weirdly handsome. Is he ill? Mentally, yes! Mumbling some incoherent things. Well, as I should, but the chief priest claimed the coma was mostly triggered by mental stress. Mental exhaustion. If you must. Silently. Wait a minute. So. So is he going insane because he's trying to be a good person, but he's a bad person and his brain won't let him? Sir Saint? 54 points. Ew, no way it can't be. Father, what is it, dear? You look like you've seen a ghost. That's not... Well, I'm also this one free. No, it is not! Father, don't suffocate him right now. No! Stop doing this! To our wise leaders, new chancellor... I hope we can all find something a bit more patient. Color his mustache pink. We can plug that filthy mouth of his. Jesus! Jesus! Whoops, leg having to move and kick him right in his own gut. Alright, girls. I hate to deal with the mess. Time we went home. I'm not a free. <laughs> God, okay, you know what? I'm a little upset with that one. Because, like, the whole thing, Barzil fan was trying to be better. Why do that to him?
I mean, I guess he was a woman kidnapper, so he kind of does deserve this in a grand karmic sort of sense. Like, the whole thing is he was doing better. And getting better. And then you just fuck him over like that? Well, I mean, I guess at the end he did kind of become God because he got the hots for another man's wife. I, I guess he did kind of deserve that. Man! What are we going to do now? Lord Zayden said we could meet up with them later after visiting the village. I intend to do just that. I want to inform the elder about all that's happened to him and talk happened and talk to him about my plans. I'm gonna decide my own future. Right. Sheila and Zaid are gonna be really, really cute and really, really lovely, and it's gonna be adorable. And Zaid, you cannot stop this. Then I have but one request, don't overdo it, don't jump into anything without my permission, and keep on your best behavior. Great, so I basically can't do I love Sheila's expressions. Did you say something? Back with grandfather. Yeah, last thing I want to get left behind. Sheila! Hmm? Oh, your wish is my command. <laughs> there they are, at it again. Well, they're free to go whenever they like, but I'm just gonna walk I'll just make sure to walk in the opposite direction. But enough of those two to last a lifetime. Wow! They really well, I guess Zaid and Sheila had a lot of dialogue during the game, so their epilogue was a little shorter, which is fine. Like, they had a lot of time. Bennett, what do you want with me? I want to introduce you to the Earl. <laughs> what for? I... Forgive me, Fav. I asked Bennett to find you. Maybe chat for just a moment? I promise not to take up too much of your time. I'm just a humble sellsword. I have nothing to speak to a lofty Earl about. And there he goes. What's that to do with me? Bonnet told me everything. I apologize if this offends you, but when my wife told me how happy she once was with you, it filled me with joy. She also told me how you stole money from your father for her sake, then left the village. Is that why you became a mercenary? Let me just make one thing clear, Earl. I was 17 when I left the village. Bonnet was only 13. As you may have already suspected, we were still quite young and stupid. Now, if you try to give her a hard time because of what happened with me... I won't turn a blind eye. Just remember that. I told you, that isn't what this is about. I'm thankful to you, Fav. How can I make you understand that? Relax, you've already convinced me. And he's trying to leave. Oh, yeah, he should be a soldier. Fav is a very good axeman. Take him with you. I fear the next war will only be more hair. Yeah. Oh, however, you are signing up to be his knight. While he's going off to fight a dragon for God. So you've signed up with Zaid to go fight a dragon for Silton. God, this continent really is fucked. I have friends waiting for me in the mainland. Don't misunderstand, Bennett. It has nothing to do with you. I simply want to live out my life. Alright. Dude, you're welcome back. Maselli is your homeland, which means our doors are always opened. I hope your happiness never fades. Good for him. So he's gonna be in the- Every ending, I'm like, okay. Will be in third game. Will not be in third game. Might be in third game later. Maybe not at all. Alright. So who haven't we done yet? Hall and Ravina. Hestian and... Hestian, Maya, and Alexander. Karayan. Orphelia... The Pirate Brothers. Alright, Holland and Ravina. Okay, that's the next one. They sent word to you too, didn't they? Yes. After you saved me, one of the first things I did was send them a missive. I don't have any memory of what happened. But I did my best to explain to them that I'm safe based on what you told me. So that's how they knew we were here. And actually penned a separate message for each of us. That old codger always overdoes it. Hall, that's no way to speak about your father. Good to see they're safe in the Solvian capital, though. I can't believe the Margulites actually managed to overthrow our homeland as well. Indeed. As of now, it seems like most of the mainland has been dominated by either the Margulites or their savage allies. And now, father's fighting them together with his band of swordsmen. What do you plan to do, Halden? If you mean to return home and assist father, I would accompany you. I had every intention of going home. Until I read that missive. 
Father's been in contact with the Emperor, who told him is the Marvelous Day. Want to revive the Dark One? Stop that plan. Right. So he's gonna. All right. So they're gonna be in the second. Okay. Okay. They're gonna be in the third game. Or no, Ravina's gonna be like, I'm not going to leave. Okay. These islands must re represent nothing but painful memories. Something I want to know. Valerius. Right. Remember what that devil did to you? Don't tell me you still don't misunderstand, Holden. It's true I once fell victim to a silver tongue, but I have no feelings. Truly really dis... Okay, so she just wants to kill him. Valerius brainwashed her, and she wants to kill him. That is fine. Let her cook. Maybe actually in love. I don't know, and honestly, I don't care. Just want to know the truth. I understand what I'm doing may sound crazy. Okay. Got it. Reclaim the time she lost. Got it. All right. So, Holden's going to be there from the start, and then Ravinia's going to come on down. Got it. Great. We know how that's going to go. This music is kind of heartwarming. This is going to be Hestian and Maya. I forgot about Lilia. I... Oh, and there's also fucking Urzel as well, and Bay Monk. There are a lot of people. Wow, alright. I want to stay in Regina. I want to go on serving you. But when I heard how Ash and Dune are fighting for their lives in Solace right now, worry seized my heart. What about... <laughs> oh, not Ash and Dune. There was a third one. What the fuck was his name? Dune was the archer. Ash was the fighter. There was another fighter. Gene. What about Gene? The food guy. Right. I'm a holy sister of Vesta, after all. I don't like fighting, but I can't turn a blind eye to people in need. That sounds more like the Lilia I know. Go on and save them, my dear. You needn't worry about little old me. Master Garland. Now then, you'll be busy preparing tomorrow, so I believe it's time you got some rest. I'll inform the Duke of the news. Just remember, you must prioritize your own safety, no matter the situation. I promised Mation I would keep you out of harm's way. So I hope you'll cooperate with me on this one. I don't want to ever have to deliver any tragic news to your father. Of course. I promise to return safely. But I hope you'll also do your best to keep yourself equally safe. Take care, Master Garland. May the gods smile- Aww. I keep forgetting characters. So what if I'm crying? Just leave me alone. You don't want to leave Master Garland, do you? Come on, Lilia. He may be a well-financed noble, but he's as old as your own father. That's not what it is. Tasha. I'm, spare me, Tasha. I'm not like you. I can't just lunge myself with the first handsome face I see. Well, then, what do you expect me to believe? That he's just serving as a father figure to you? Come on, Lilia. I'm not that dumb. Enough is enough. I love you as a dear friend, Tasha, but there are certain lines that not even a friend can cross. I know you're simply trying to cheer me up with your jokes like you always do, but this isn't funny at all. Wait, you're actually mad? For real? I'm sorry, Lilia. I've just been so elated ever since we reunited that I must have gotten carried away. I'm so- Aww. Listen, there's like, everything is going wrong. You two, you can kiss and make up, but like, there are dragons everywhere. The continent is- Fucked. Delicious. They're gonna have their slumber party. And that's going to be great. Troy! Troy also hasn't spoken yet. Aw, oh, that's nice. These two are nice. Who's next? Talon. Searching for two men. Oh! Talon was like, I command fleets now, and then Castor and Porok. The famed twin captains, Castor and Porok. If the rumors are to be believed, they're both legendary sailors unlike Vestaria has ever seen. Hey, bro, I think he's talking about us. What's that, Porok? He's in the middle of an engagement with some ale here. But the kid said he's got business with us. Fine, fine. What are you, some pint-sized lordling? What do you want with us anyway? As veteran captains of the sea, I was hoping I could hire you to protect my fleet. 
You'll be paid well for your services, of course. Wait, hold on a minute. Just who are you, kid? And where are you planning to take said fleet? Oh yes, I suppose an introduction is order. I am Talon. My family serves the Empire and controls a northern port on the mainland. We command many ships, and have traditionally always served the Empire when they needed us. But now I plan to lead a fleet to aid the salvation of Vestaria. My first submission is to deliver supplies to Solace, which only barely managed to complete. As you may know, the southern Meledian Sea is crawling with pirates, and several of my transports were hijacked before I reached Frawl Harbor. On the morrow, I plan to use my fleet to transport 3,000 troops to Aragoth. I should have a little more than 50 transport at my disposal. I'd like to have two of you protect them. The fate of Solus hangs in the balance, and I will pay you as much as you require. Captain Castor, Captain Porok. We owe the Duke a great deal, and the lad's certainly got some guts to march in here. Can't even say I hate him. He's kind of cute, like a little pup or something. Castor? Alhenna, oh, you've finally come back to us. Huh? It's me, Castor. Don't you recognize me? You came to find me, haven't you? It's been a whole decade since we've seen each other. What the fuck are you talking about? Castor, what? Look old enough to be your father now. What did? What the fuck are you talking about? Captain Castor, one of the twin sailors. His fiance. He's right. Although it's with my betrothal. Alhenna, do you think you think I was? You aren't her. Yes, I suppose that makes sense. She'd be over thirty if she. Talking about her mother? Huh. Come on, bro, get a grip. I'll hand a Paris in an accident years ago, just forget about her. Such a gap, yeah, Porok. Who are you talking about? Look, we'll take the job. Let's forget my brother's current state of mind. Trust me, he'll be ready to rain once he gets a proper night's sleep. He must have loved that woman a great deal. No, no, please don't misunderstand. You see, we hail from a small fishing village in Ravel. And when we were in our 20s, a band of troubadours stopped by. It was a very small group of only about two dozen performers, but that was enough to dazzle and enchant clueless bumpkins like us. Both my brother and I became absolutely mesmerized. Especially my brother. We ended up visiting them every day, and he fell hard for one of their dancers. A woman named Alhenna. Delicate looking woman who spoke with great eloquence as if she were a highborn. The perfect storm for a simple man who'd always been a stranger to romance. She claimed she used to be the daughter of a noble, until her father sold her to pay off a debt. She danced so she could survive. Of course, my brother fell right for it. Next thing I knew, he handed over a hefty sum of money to her and he borrowed from a loan shark. Used this to buy your freedom. Took the money and vanished. Okay. They so much took me for him and... Okay. So that's why they were slaves! He still believes the evil seductress is out there waiting for him. After a decade, managed to escape the slave ship and stuck into a pirate's base. Castor wanted to go back to the village, but as the slavers had sent many men to capture us... Alright. One of the handsome troubadours, my brother's insistence. Alright. His trust in Altanas would have get through those years of hell. Alright. Later, when one of our neighbors found out the truth, Alhana died in an accident, so I decided to let my brother preserve the only beautiful... Wow. That's actually kind of a very sweet and depressing story. How dare you like me, some vile deceiver. You don't resemble her one bit. She was the kind of evil you could see coming from a mile away. Now he actually believes the love was in life is unparalleled beauty. <laughs> Alright, that was nice. Phoebe again! Jesus Christ! Phoebe's been in like three scenes. And we still haven't seen anything with Carrie Ann. Okay, now I'm actually going to try to remember who we have left. Obviously, the end of the game is going to be with Athol and Zade, so take them aside. A court is just gone. Her dad's dead, and she's going through her emo hours where she plays Linkin Park AMVs. She's not important. We still need Carrie Ann. Estian, Alexander, and Maya. Orphelia. Troy. And those are the six? I think? Maybe? Anyone I'm forgetting. 
No, that's... That's it. We've gotten everyone other than those. I'm a duke. I couldn't live it down if I couldn't do this much. Hmm. I told me dancing was necessary skill to any noble who's worth his weight in gold. Tch! <laughs> so he truly raises an elite highborn. I have a much different picture of you now than the warlord I first met on the battlefield. Surprised that even I have the capability to act as a gentleman when the inspiration strikes? Ha! <laughs> Don't say, look around. Have you noticed how many other men gaze upon us with envious eyes? <laughs> Not exactly. What's wrong? You're sweating, Phoebe. Has all this dancing tired you out? If so, then allow me to carry your body through the rest of this waltz. This part's the natural rhythm of dancing, you know. Aw. Questions? Duke Foros, um... Phoebe, what did I tell you? Stop calling me Duke. How old did you know my mother? My first sister was much older than me, but I remember her well. She was kind and considerate to a degree that not many others can boast. And visually, you resemble her a great deal. The way you phrase that seems like that's where our looks our looks or similarities end. Wouldn't go that far. Wise, proactive woman. She was a judge. My father's policies kept Cordia governed, enacted laws. Okay. The judges have typically been of noble birth. There are many trials where peasants found themselves at a disadvantage. Okay. That's really cool. The goddess of justice. That's cool. Good for your dead sister. I'm amazed, though. I never slightly my mother had achieved such things. Heard she was a mage knight. At the time I noticed there are female areas of study where magic, theology, and law. Wouldn't believe how smart she was. It was a lot she said to my father in the Civil War. All right. This is nice! I like learning about this random woman that doesn't matter to anything. I think back, it was only my thanks to a certain... able to marry. Back when my father still reigned, Rolok had been sent out to subjugate a rebellion. Infuriated by the pillaging and murdering, he ended up losing his cool and violently beat the noble who incited it. Vigilante justice on the battlefield. Alright. Despite only being his early 20s, it seems bright feud had been shattered. Sure, the case to be reopened and personally investigated. Improve the entire bit. Nothing more than a deceptive, vengeful trap. Okay. So, Rolik's first wife he met because she phoenix righted him out of death. And then he met his second wife because she stabbed 50 wolves. Shame cost me my livelihood. Therefore, I should take responsibility. Indeed, I hereby sentence you to serve as my wife. Oh, that's hilarious. For a band trying to marry his duke's daughter. His father apparently had even confined Rolik in his own castle for a bit in order to let him cool his head. Seeing Rolik, Earl would have none of it. Left without any choice, she put him father for aid, and selling, blah, 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 and they were married. Oh, that's nice. I'm sure you find a man who tickles your fancy, just proactive. I could certainly see Lafine, don't know about myself. I'm telling you that tale certainly took a trip me down. Entire decade since she died. God damn. Even now, fills with a great deal of emotions, one thing's for sure. Like, there's so much goddamn text! Like, I'm enjoying this, this is lovely, but holy hell, I have been reading this epilogue for an hour and 40 minutes. Good lord! First glance, she seemed plain and quiet, always managed to leave an impression. Mm -hmm. It's how lucky can one man be. Goddess of love herself has taken a favor. Hmm. That, oh, this was nice. I like Foros. I hope he comes back someday. Yes, Lafine is Lord's... Okay, so we will not have Phoebe in the third game. Damn shame. Okay. I forgot about Urzel again. Okay. I'll be right back. I'm gonna go take a leak. And refill my drink. Jesus Christ. It's a goddamn game.
Good lord. Okay. Back again. Ursul, why do you look if a monster just jumped out of your closet? Uh, I was waiting to dance with you the whole time, but now look at things. The ball's ended. Are you really that obsessed with the Duke? Don't tell me you're a gold. That's her uncle! Sheesh, don't get so mad. I only came over here because I wanted to talk. Besides, how was I supposed to know that guy was your uncle? Yes, yes, of course. Only one dance, though. I'd rather not spend my entire evening babysitting. You aren't one of my... You are my classmate in the ten minutes end of story. Therefore, it's hardly my duty. You need to grow up. Your sister is always fighting her hardest to protect everyone. Meanwhile, you treat everyone as if it's a silly little game. Shame. Full-fledged, super-powered mage. <laughs> we can use this next war to determine... Right. Oh, that fucking dick. Right. Um, may I help you? Rumor has it, you're the missing princess of Spire. Now tell, mind telling me what possessed you to utter such a foul lie? I will forgive no man or rabble who dareth besmirch the royal legacy of my kingdom. Now I will think you scheming swindler. Just what are you plotting? Um, pardon me, but would you mind telling me who you are? Just a loyal citizen of Spire. I graduated with high marks from the Magic Academy, only to be forced into Millennium servitude. Make no mistake, once I fulfill my duties as a hireling, I intend to vacate this kingdom at once. And if Melida dares to take arms against Spire, I will spare them no quarter. Once I return home, I shall enlist myself in the Queen's vanguard and do my utmost to foil any craven strategies Melida attempts to employ. Ah, yes, of course! You you plot to tear Spire apart from within, don't you? You're a Meledian spy, that's why you spread that filthy rumor. As a loyal servant of Spire, I will stop at nothing to vanquish every last one of its foes, which may include you, depending on your response. Oh, I think I just remembered your name. You're Karagan, aren't you? I'm very impressed by the depth of your love for your homeland. I was sent away when I was quite small, so I have no memory of what it's like there. Still, I care deeply about the safety of its people and the welfare of my half-sister, Civil. Ever since I learned of my lineage, I've been dreaming about a wonderful place my homeland must be. So you can imagine how sad I became after I heard all the terrible news about the recent happenings within the kingdom. However, listening to you talk has washed my worries away. Lanineo explained to me that the Queen of Spire has been enthralled by a dark power. A power that has forced her to lead her kingdom and its people down a very dark path. If that is truly the case, then I vow to save Spire and Sybil no matter what it takes. I have yet to gain the pride you care for your country, but I still believe I have responsibility to protect its people. Amelia really went, wow, you just threatened to murder me. That's really cool. I like your loyalty to your kingdom. Hmm? What the? This is truly the royal crest. Yes, a sage of my caliber can easily tell this is no forgery. Please forgive my insolence, princess. You must be one step... <laughs> a single glance into your ardent eyes is enough to tell me the righteous soul you possess. And now, Sir Karayan, I beg of you. Please assist me in saving our homeland. We must rescue Queen Civil. Here we go, baby! Karayan! What do you mean you're not one to speak about your own abilities? You gas yourself up all the fucking time! Hail the princess! Long live Spire! Woo! Orphelia, right? Oh, Hestian and Alexander, okay. Good. Your family's always been well-respected house, you contribute a great deal, young although you might be. Alright. So, he's gonna just take over as Earl. Got it. Alex? Why right, so down, Hesti? What did Ariel say to you? Restore my family's legacy. She lauded my father and his loyal service to the duchy. He's going to get a Medal of Honor. We'll all miss your parents, but could taking the helm now. Aw. No, is he worried about his friend? Just so you know, Alex, things won't change for me one bit. I don't think he's one of my people, nor one of my banner lint. Oh my god. Hestian. I love you as an equal friend, no matter what sort of lofty title he managed to assume. Whenever you're in danger, I'll be there to rescue you. Our relationship will never change. But we can't forget the fact that you're a lord and I'm a commoner. 
If you show me special treatment, your bannermen will grow jealous, and that I do not want. So I will not serve as one of your bannermen, Hesty. Instead of returning to Cordia... Okay, so Alex is going to be in the next game. Maya will go back home. Okay. I'm loath to part with you. That's why I was against the city of my father. You mean much more to me than... Aww. Look at them. They're hetero life mates. They're even making woodcut prints of us in the city. Ha! That's great. Some of them become rather intriguing rumors. Point is, we're not children. You have a duty to serve your people, and I have a duty to pay back Zaid. We are Knights of Cordia. We must fulfill our duties. Back in my brains, but come, friend. This is the eve before we say farewell. Aww. Aww. Oh, right, Maya. Nelky! I forgot about Nelky! God damn! Sweet and gentle, Alex? Hmm. Well, he's far cry from Lord Hestian, but I suppose he might not look too bad compared to other people. I don't think it'll be because you're used to him. I lost both of my parents. Watching you filled me the brim with envy. I mean, Alex seems like he's always doing his best to look out for it. Aww. We lost our father when we were very little. He would always go on and on about how it'd be his job to protect. Aww. If you're that infatuated with him, why don't you have him court you? He isn't very experienced when it comes to women. It's about time he started looking. Hm. Don't be ridiculous. It's far too early for me. Still a minister in training. Just thinking about trying to get to know a boy better makes me blush. I'm a choked monkey. There's nothing romantic. Are you sure? Hestian definitely is into you. Look at these two. Gas each other up. Go get laid. Have beautiful babies. Um... Uh, Go to Florida and retire. Perhaps he might even come to you for proposition soon. Just thinking about it made me so happy. There we go. Look at you two. This is no evening for quarrels. We were quarreling, we were just... By the by, do you mind giving me a moment alone with Maya? <laughs> Here it goes. Oh, Baymonk! I forgot about- I said Baymonk earlier, and then forgot about him. Good as ever. Farewell. The war with Margulites isn't over yet. We did apparently get enough recruits. And we can certainly make do without one of your ilk. Right then, free to take a hike. Just remember the next person who hides you happens to be on the enemy side. We won't hold back. Loud and clear. Oh, so he's just going to leave. Still have any of that money left? Sack of junk, maybe we'll sell it to finance a trip out of here. What? Okay, I don't get that one. Oh, oh, they're, they're, they're gonna elaborate. Knowing Cesar, it's found something special. I forgot he just talks to his sword. <laughs> Hush, child. You mustn't make eye contact with people like that. Hey, now who's Troy and Orphelia? I'm a man playing the wallflower yet again. I'm a man, not a flower. That. Hold on, I'm I'm gonna hit the snipping tool. That's a funny line. Speaking of which, I saw many men ask for your hand on the dance floor. Did you manage to push past them to the one your heart desires? Excuse me, whomever do you speak of? Lord Zadrian, of course. Your heart belongs to him, does it not? Wow. And here I was, Troy, thinking you'd be the one person to spare me that sort of talk. Yeah. What do you think I am, made of stone? Passionate blood runs through me, just like everyone else. I certainly see that now. I've been fond of Lord Zadrian ever since we were children, and I still respect him a great deal. But that has nothing to do with love and romance. This may sound like just an excuse, but... Uh, how should I put this? Of course I have feelings for Lord Zadrian, and I'll treasure these feelings for the rest of my life. But, Troy, haven't you ever found anyone like that? Oh, yes. One unlike any other. Ah, let me guess. Lord Zacharias? I am fond of Lord Zadrian, and I trust him a great deal. But Lord Zacharias will always have a special place in my heart. But how did he earn it? 
What sort of past do you and Lord Zacharias share? My lady, you come from one of the greatest houses in Redessa, second to only that of the Dukes. Surely the fate of a low-born, illegitimate noble such as myself would be of little interest to you. I also doubt anyone could understand my relationship with Lord Zacharias were they not also privy to the details of my upbringing. Well, Troy, unless it would cause you agony, I'd love to hear your sad anime backstory. If you insist, but you'll have to pardon me if the unpleasant content of the tale puts a damper on your evening. My father loved me a great deal, and raised me with the intention that I would one day become a great knight. But when I turned 13, he passed away, and my older brother succeeded him. That's when my brother began to abuse me. My mother had been a low-born handmaid, so as far as my stepmother and brother were concerned, I was but a foul stain on their legacy. Day after day, they humiliated me, and when the whippings became too depraved for me to bear, I finally mustered the courage to run. I wandered the mountains, managing to survive on what small game I could catch out in the wilderness. But soon, the hunger got to me. One day, knowing perfectly well that I was committing a cowardly act of pure evil, I stole a piece of bread from a house in a poor village. But one of the villagers caught me, and after a brief chase, I was captured. Unfortunately for me, that village had a tradition of punishing thieves by chopping off their arms. After dragging me into the village square, they bound me face up on the ground, and a man came out carrying a mean-looking axe. Foolish boy, he growled. Not even the worst thieves dare to rob starving peasants. Apparently, that village had suffered greatly after the previous year's drought. And I had chosen to steal bread from a family who had only recently lost their child to starvation. It shamed me to my core. No matter how hungry I may have been, theft was still a cardinal sin. I begged the gods for forgiveness. Honestly, I prayed for them to chop my head off in lieu of my arm. And at that moment, my sheer frustration and hatred came toward my... Came to that. Towards myself, caused an ocean of tears to come spilling out from my eyes. Suddenly, commotion filled the air, and I looked up to see a night brigade marching through the village. They apparently had came to deliver food to the village and were passing supplies out to the people in the streets. On whose authority do you lynch this man? Only the king's knights have the right to carry out justice, announced the commander. The village elder apologized, and I was instantly freed. That was my first meeting with Lord Zacharias. Assume that I would be sequestered by the knights. You would be imagine my shock when hand out food and money to me as well. You do not suffer alone, he said. Now swear to me you will never steal again. Then, just like that, they departed. I ran as fast as I could, trying to catch up with them, but my legs were not fast enough. I just wanted to see him again somehow. I owed him a proper thanks at the very least. That desire led me to somehow carry myself to Regina, where I found a menial job and waited for the right chance. Finally, the knights opened up their recruitment once more, and I miraculously passed their rigorous examination. I reunited with Lord Zacharias when I was sixteen, three years after committing that baleful ze deed. But he did not remember me, and I remembered being shocked when I found out how young he truly was. He seemed wise beyond his years, far older than a teenager at the very least. After I became a knight, Lord Zacharias continued to guide me whenever he could. Of course, the man was kind and gentle to all he met. He never gave me preferential treatment. Benevolent and strong, blessed with a noble heart, I was gay as fuck for him. And I loved him from the bottom of my heart. But in the end, I would never get a chance to properly repay him. Forgive me. I can go on no further with this tale. No, I'm sorry. It's fine, Troy. You needn't say anything anymore. Incidentally, Troy, do you plan to depart on the morrow, yes? Please watch over Lord Zadrian for me. Naturally. No matter what danger befalls us, he always put his life before my own. I will always put his life before my own. It's the least I can do for Zacharias. I heard you will manage Redessa as the Duke's representative in his absence. Yes. I wish I could join you all, but when Lord Zade came to me with a personal request, I just couldn't say no. His judgment was sound. You were the only one capable of taking the Earl's place now that he's been promoted to Royal Chancellor. I, on the other hand, earned myself a whole new roster of men. All natives of Redessa, bravely choosing to fight to protect their families. But their bravery only persists because they know their families will remain safe in their absence. Prithee, guard them well, my lady. Redessa suffered grievous wounds under Solvent occupation in the long civil war that ensued. I don't know if I'll be able to ever truly take Lord Zadrian's place but I intend to do my very best. 
I only hope that we can restore our land to its former glory as soon as possible. So that may we all focus all of our efforts on supporting the- Yeah, there are- Like, it is crazy how terrible everything is everywhere all at once. Like... A fine plan, find different regions, our hearts will remain as one. Alright. You saved my life and I still owe you great debt. Someday I may repay it. A handshake. Aww. That's a very nice scene. Alright. Finally, we got through everyone. Holy hell. I had forgotten just how many fucking characters are in this game. Huh. <sighs> Trying to think. Hilda was technically around too. But she and Siegfried are off doing their own thing. They left the plot early on. Okay. Here we are. Standing here with you reminds me of last autumn. Remember that night we spent gazing up at the stars? If only I'd taken what you said more seriously, I might have been able to prevent you from falling into Grevendel's clutches. I was a fool, Athol. All I could focus on was the fact that my brother had returned, without ever taking a moment to consider what hid within. Are you talking about when you left the capital? Yes. You had an inkling that the Zek who returned to us was an imposter, didn't you? That's why you spoke of Zoe and tried to corner Grevendel. And while you were doing your best to uncover the truth, I was... I wasn't sure. But for some reason, my heart rejected that Chancellor. I could feel deep inside that something was wrong. My heart kept telling me that Zoe was the true Zek, and I couldn't manage to convince myself of anything else. I felt the same. I knew deep down that things weren't right, but I also felt like I was just trying to make excuses to myself. I kept thinking about what would happen if I were to accuse my brother of something without any proof. What if I was all wrong? In the end, I simply lacked courage. And so, I ran away, leaving you far behind. Athol, what can I possibly do to make up for what I've done? Zaid, please listen carefully to what I'm about to say. When I awoke at the underground altar, I found a lone girl gripping my hand. Duke Theodel's younger sister, Amelia. Yes, she's the one who averts the petrification spell that had been cast on you. As Amelia tended to me, she told me her story. She had believed she was frailing in blood, only to find out she was the Princess of Spire, and her real parents died long ago. Her half-sister was Queen Sybil, the one who had worked with the forces of darkness to petrify me. Mm-hmm. Still, the sheer shock of all was enough to plunge her into the depths of despair. She felt that she couldn't bear to go on living. And the cry embraced me. She had lost all sight of who she really was. She felt sad, alone, and no matter what she did, the tears wouldn't stop coming. But through her tears, she went on. She said she still believed there was a reason the gods had given her life. And she knew she had still loved ones willing... Yeah, Theodel, who might love her a little too much. God damn it, Kaga. <clears throat> Even when she was little, she never had any qualms about throwing down her life for her loved ones should the situation call for it. And she knew her loved ones were still with her, ready to embrace her and give her the strength she needed to move forward. At last, Amelia realized she had nothing to fear. And so, she accepted... According to OBS, we are back. Would chat like to speak for me? Did I lose all of you? Are you all dead? I certainly hope not. Alright. Well, I think I might be streaming to absolutely no one. Great. Absolutely incredible. Well. Woo! Everything is great! Yahoo! Let me try to ask Discord. Stream is back. Got literally it waited. It waited until like the end. God damn it. 
Alright, hello everyone. Are we back? Is life good? Okay. Alright, I'm just gonna keep going. Alright. This is why I've decided to return to the Temenos. As penance for shirking my duties in the name of selfishness. I'm appalled to think of how many people have suffered thus far due to my own self-indulgence. I have two more years to serve as a circlet maiden. I am loath to part with you again, Zadrian, but I know I must fulfill my duty. You've truly grown, Athol. Honestly, I can't help but feel like I've been left behind. Sorry, that sounded self-centered. God just wanted to make you suffer a bit more. Yup. Zade, I don't know what the future may bring, but I plan to return to Regin on my 18th birthday. But before you go, there's one last thing I need to do. No. Not even you allowed to take one step closer to the princess. What am I? Seven to shake my hand. Apologize for your brazen conduct. Right, she was the one that, um, made her smoot. Right, right. He said he would be happy to leave the manage the affairs of the palace in your hands, so I expect you to work your very hardest. Chancellor. Well, can me believe we return to our separate rooms? Good night. Ready, Zade? <laughs> Hot don't, spine, please! I have very important business to discuss with you. But you were so predisposed, I had no choice to patiently wait my turn. Anyways, I did remember one thing. A court gave me a missive to deliver to you, but I forgot to hand off during all the chaos. She said she simply couldn't believe that her brother would kill her own father, and she had to find out the truth for herself. Time and time again. How can I always be so foolish? I never had a clue what was going on in her heart. Of course she went off on her own. I never was there to support her. Nothing you could have done about it this time. See, once the court departed, make sure to send Slain after her. He's tracking her movements. She would send word once he's found a court, and hopefully to keep her from doing anything rash. At Sola's board of spies, she would have to swoop over and pick her up as. Okay. We just need to focus on getting to Solus. Alright. The game is going to end, but things are not going to go. or, like, easy. We are not going to go off gently into that good night. Hmm. Once again, it appears my wish will not start. Exploit managed to suppress the Duke's fears. Lingering concerns, not one. Chancellor, seeing the princess smile again has cleared every last cloud I once obscured in my heart. And it's honored to receive your aid, Chancellor. Thank you so much for everything. The Duke. So it's shame of forcing the Duke to listen to such a trite complaint, that's for certain. Either way, I think you're the right. Either way, minuscule event. Mm-hmm. Rain and shine, your grunt Achille have always... Yeah, nope. The flyers have always been helpful. The Soviet 3 does have a lot of problems to solve. Thanks to you, the princess has grown to a fine young leader in the Duke. Therefore, I would like to show my gratitude. That's great! She's going great. Two more years of study. Please guide her. Yeah, 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 yeah. The story is a long way to go on its road to recovery, but I have only high hopes. Radiant future, a thalfish, surely rise, benevolent rulers. Woo! Can love and duty ever coexist without friction? They will carve out their own proper... <laughs> I'm gonna laugh at their expense. Oh, chance I'm starting to remember too. They were so adorable. And here I was nervous why another to return to their quarters. So we're gonna start with as devious as the rest of us. Let's go. He makes adequately ashamed of himself. Enjoy the benefits. Drinking. Aw. I don't know if you actually managed to accomplish anything useful over these last two years. Chin up, Prody. Supposed to be a secret. Two years from now, once the princess of Fistland is queen, she plans to name us as the gods of honor. Right. They're gonna be great. <laughs> I love Bonacel and Prody. And so, the Nether Drake of Fire vanished into darkness. Regina bank banquet that took 30 years. Soon after, uh, Aethal departed. While Zadrian went to the west. 
Ominous to everyone, it would be another year until the Dark War. Tale for another time. There we go. Alright, that was Vistoria Saga 2. The stream had to crash. I couldn't just... Oh my goodness, artwork! Oh, that's nice! S. Kaga, game designer and producer. That was nice. Show me more screenshots. Oh, wait a minute! Dell's right there! Where's... I couldn't find Spara. Or Lila. Shit. Oh, God. I feel so bad. You were in the second column? I was looking for you, Spara. I really was. I'm sorry, I just couldn't see you in time. War of Maselli. Crossroads. Shifting Tides. The Defense of Labeth. 7X Operation Wolfpack. Distant Memories. God, remembering all of these maps. Oh, the Azimor Gambit was nice. Supply and Demand, that was a nice one. Guiding Light, that one took a little while, but it was it was pretty good. I have a Storm, this one was nice. Difficult, but nice. Caught Red-Handed, that one was alright. Making Peace. Oh, right, this was, that was the, um, halfway mark. Inherited Will, that one was really good. Lady Bennett was a lot, but also really good. It localized. There were more credit screenshots? And I didn't get to see them? I'm mad. Yeah, and this is where my memory's stronger. Chapter 20 might be my favorite chapter in any of any Fire Emblem Kaga Saga. That was fucking amazing. And then 51 turns for Prisoners of Regina. That one was 43, that one did take a while. And then 16 for the final chapter. 582 turns across 25 chapters. On average, Almost 24 turns per map. So that is heavily skewed by the longness of the last two. Yeah. That was nice. Is this the next time on Dragon Ball Z? Oh, okay. Oh, it's the epilogue that... But no one's story is done yet. Like, what's the point of epilogue blurbs if the story isn't done? For a time, but yeah, she's gonna leave and shit's gonna happen. Right, Cesar has no battles and no wins because I didn't have to use him as a filler unit. Ah, uh, they're gonna get married. It's gonna be lovely. That's lovely. So Slain did catch up to her. That's good. Hey, alright, so she was with the Temenos, probably fighting with Eddard. So have a great many achievements in naval warfare. And then Castor went on to fight. Palem is a legendary. Odd when you think about it. <laughs> After the Battle of Majima, Baymaka's boon companion disappeared like the wind. Carrying an insult prince of personal bodyguard. Okay. Now key. Traveled Zay to the west and saved a great many lives in further crusades. Drake. Despite extremely busy, but Drake still find. Oh, okay. So he did get married to Ariel. Under orders from Ms. Athol, Rolik traveled to Temenos to save its people. Alright, so Rolik is currently protecting God. Got it. Phoebe... ...is also protecting God. Lana Sanctum. Okay, these are all the people that are protecting God. Alright. Hey, Lucian got laid! Good for him. Claude... Okay, so he went to go report the good deeds to his parents. 
Western Crusade. The Raging Bull, that's a Kane reference! That is totally a Kane reference. Aw, oh, nice. Very close. So she got along with Giskel's wife as whatever her name is. Alright, so Amlut would eventually meet Silton. So Barzilfen just gets thrown in jail. Alright. Front of Hade. Legendary Holy Drake. So she just, she fights in the crusade with Fernando? Still hasn't lost his cheer. A lone girl was seen ever at his side, right? Despite various grumblings, Penelope ended up I'm about to freeze fire, her homeland. Okay, Halden. Headed to Surma Abbey to fulfill his second duty. Returned to the Duchy of Odessa and would worked as a proxy. Zeta Fusolis. Hey, so she got to reunite with Jean, Ash, and um Dune. That's nice. Fought gloriously in the Western Crusade. Um, being a circle maiden and flying a dragon. I thought Fernando left! She probably got a new dragon. She needs to help out. Ariel worked hard to rebuild Cordia and Frist while her brother was out fighting. And then there's Foros. Became the commander of Lana Sanctum. Alright. Got it. He was fighting, doing good. Then return to Vestaria to take part in a faded battle. Theo! Where new destiny awaited him. What does that mean? Oh, sorry. Amelia headed to Spy to save her half-sister. But, okay, that's going to be stuff for the third game. Alright, so basically all of these but and new destinies are all for what happens in the next game. Got it. And then there's Prody. After freeing Regina, Chancellor Garland entrusted Prody with training. And then there's Tasha. Alright, she still has her own restaurant. Good for her. Emma, working harder than ever. She chants Garland. Got it. Leia. Thank God we learned about Leia. Thank goodness. And Polos got himself a leader that didn't suck. Went Duchy with her beloved daughter. Improving the Giga Ballista. And his wife participated in the war to liberate the Lost Sanctum and still fight hard in the hopes they can one day clear the Tarnish. All right. Hey, she got pregnant. Good for her. Although Ethel currently travels north, her heart stays always with Zade. All right. God, a few of those um NPCs from Chapter Twenty died for me, so I'll never know like what happened to them. But I don't fucking Jesus Christ! Imagine trying to clear Chapter Twenty without any NPCs dying. That's fucking insane. But that was Vistoria Saga 2. It was very, very good. I can't wait for the third one. What? Nothing else to say. Um, two hours, 20 minutes of an epilogue? I'm fine with that, if about 10 minutes was spent trying to get the stream to come back to life. Bert, best character, Troy's our boy. Thank you guys very much for coming out to the stream. I will thank you guys very much, and, uh, yeah, next stream, probably gonna go back to Fire Emblem. And now my sister is calling me. Ah, gotta call so many people back. Alright, we have 11 of you here. Thank you very much for sticking around through the crash. It's time to raid a channel that's playing Fire Emblem. And hopefully I don't send you to someone who's Portuguese this time. Alright. Let me look for a name that doesn't look Portuguese. Um... Uh, let's do Colonel M because they have a profile... Wait, no! I just realized they 
they have a channel preview so I can listen to it. Don't seem to be talking at all. Let alone in Portuguese. Oh, Colonel's your buddy? Alright, sure, for Spara then. I, I clicked away, shit. Alright, Colonel is his buddy, alright. For Spara's friend, Colonel M, with the Clive profile picture. Thank you guys very much for coming on by. Next time, it's probably going to be an Iron Man. Could be FE4. Reek's been telling me for ages that that's a really fun game to Iron Man. So I might do that.